Flight Dynamics Officer reports that we're tracking right down the middle. G-Force is building up on Orion, now almost to 3 Gs, a predicted G-Force load of some 8 to 8.3 Gs expected. And uh, the uh, Global Positioning System satellites have a good lock on Orion as it uh, heads toward its splashdown target. We're two and a half minutes away from forward bay cover jettison, and this view again from the Ikana aircraft over the splashdown zone. Orion at 125,000 feet. Healthy thruster system reported by the propulsion officer here in Mission Control. I'm Peter Cullen, and you're watching NASA TV. Passing through 80,000 feet. Range to splash down about five miles. Preparing the Orion crew module for its first flight test. Passing through 60,000 feet. The Kennedy Space Center in Florida in June 2000. Crew module for Orion's flight test arrived at Kennedy Space Orion has Center gone in subsonic in June 2012 and was transported to the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building High Bay for manufacturing, processing, and pre flight testing. To Kennedy Space Center in Florida in June 2000. To Kennedy Space Center in Florida in June 2012. Was transported Standing by for forward bay cover jettison. And NASA engineers and tech arrived at Kennedy Space Center and also was transported to the operations and checkout building for build up and arrived at Kennedy Space Center and also was transported to the operations and checkout building. 35,000 build feet. Processing. The module was completed with the installation of the fairings that protected in the early stage while containing more than 200 instrumentation sensors. Containing more than 200 instrumentation That view of Orion from the Econa. More than 200 instrumentation sensors. Containing more than 200 instrumentation sensors. Containing more than 200 instrumentation 25,000 feet. Time to splash down. Atmosphere. Less than four minutes. Splash one step closer to the flight test. The Orion crew module, and then both modules were put Forward bay cover has been deployed. Was transported from the operations and checkout building. Drogues have been deployed. Hazardous servicing facility. Orion stack was transported from the operations and checkout out building to the payload hazardous servicing facility. Great video Inside from the Econa. The spacecraft was fueled with ammonia, hydrazine, and hyperion out building to the payload. Fifteen thousand feet until fueled. splashdown. Ammonia, hydrazine, and hyperion and were transported to the launch abort system facility system, including the launch abort motor and the additive for processing, testing, and integration. Coming up on main chute deploy. Temper, Orion was moved from the payload hazardous servicing facility to the launch. In late September, Orion was launch abort system facility. Inside the high launch abort system facility. Inside the high. From a waypoint over the Pacific Ocean, Ocean there is your new spacecraft, America. Spacecraft away from the falling rocket. At astronauts, if a problem arises during launch, drogues away. Orion waited inside the launch abort Main chute deploy. Facility. Orion waited inside the on mains. Everything looking good until the United Launch Alliance good reefing reported for core and starboard boosters arrived by March. Earlier this year, the Delta in March and were offloaded and transported in March and were offloaded and transported to the horizontal integration facility near Space Launch Complex 37 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Port and starboard boosters. Then the Delta IV second stage. Made it to the rocket's central core booster. Second stage was made it to the rocket's central core booster. The Delta IV Four thousand feet. Orion's flight September 30th and made the trek to the launch pad. September 30th and made three the good main to the shoots reported uh, from the USS the Anchorage on October 1st. The nearly that's confirmed here in Mission Control. First, the nearly 180 foot tall launch vehicle from a high speed rate of uh, into the vertical position 
20,000 miles an hour to a gentle return back to Earth more than four hours and 20 minutes after it took off on a Delta IV heavy rocket from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. After more than two years of work, Orion is... Now ready. 3,200 feet now until splashdown. NASA's Orion spacecraft, orbiting about 250 miles up, NASA is using the International Space Station to conduct cutting-edge research and technology development and to increase our knowledge about what it takes to live and work for long periods of time in space. Currently, the six crew members of the and to increase our knowledge about what it takes to live in the edge research 2200 and technology feet now. development. And currently, the six crew members of the in Russian Soyuz spacecraft. Now, of a U.S. commercial crew space transportation capability that provides safe, reliable, and cost-effective access Winds, to uh, from the at the surface uh, just about 12 knots. Is spearheading the Wave heights uh, no more than about four and a half feet or so. The International Perfect provider, conditions for Orion's homecoming. SpaceX. In September, NASA selected two commercial providers, Boeing and SpaceX. Japanese Boeing CST-100 and SpaceX soil to and from the space station using the Cuff's Crew Dragon spacecraft. These new American spacecraft will also allow us to add a seventh crew member to the space station and double the amount of time the crew has to conduct research aboard the unique more ambitious missions. Sending this view uh, from Orion itself, uh, the, the chutes, helping it uh, to descend gently and Orion spacecraft towards uh, and down to the Pacific. Orbit will enable humans to explore Mars. 1,000 feet. We are going to different exploration destinations, so we need different systems. NASA will own and operate its Orion spacecraft and space launch system for deep space missions and will purchase services from Boeing and SpaceX. That's what America's space program should look like in the 21st century. To get astronauts to and from the station. To get astronauts to and from the Just station. Just a few hundred feet until splashdown. That's what America's space program should look like. That's what America's space program should look like. 100 feet. We have splashdown. Splashdown confirmed at 10.29 a.m. Central Time. Orion is back on Earth. America has driven a golden spike as it crosses a bridge into the future. And we now have confirmation that Orion is stable one, upright. Orion splashdown at a mission elapsed time of four hours and 24 minutes. And the uh, crew module uprighting system uh, is now activated these are the five inflatable airbags at the uh, at the top of the spacecraft to ensure that Orion remains in an upright position and you can see it uh, on the water The flight dynamics officer now has uh, provided a final splashdown uh, target in the Pacific with a latitude of 23.6 degrees north latitude, 116.46 degrees west longitude, a bullseye splashdown for America's newest spacecraft. Splashdown occurring once again at 10.29 a.m. Central Time, 8.29 a.m. Pacific Time at a point uh, some 270 miles or so west of Baja, California, about 630 statute miles southwest of San Diego.
look at some of the top NASA stories of 2014. Here's a look at some of the top NASA... Orion uh, passed through the Van Allen radiation belt twice, all of its systems functioning perfectly, no effects whatsoever on the shielding or the computers or the avionics of the uh, craft. Reaching a peak altitude at 9.11 a.m. Central of 3,604.2 statute miles. The uh, crew module separated uh, from the uh, service module right on time at uh, 9.28 a.m. Central Time and then we moved uh, towards uh, the critical entry phase. Once again, uh, this view uh, we're looking uh, from one of the helicopters providing a sequential still video uh, of Orion in the water, uh, perfectly upright, uh, having splashed down upright, uh, releasing its parachutes. The waves uh, cooperating, the weather cooperating uh, at the splashdown zone. Orion uh, entered uh, the high speed uh, part of its uh, journey back to Earth uh, with entry interface uh, reaching uh, the first traces of Earth's atmosphere at 10.19 a.m. Central Time, uh, moving at a speed of about 20,000 miles an hour. Uh, moments later entered a very brief blackout period while uh, the plasma effects of its uh, descent uh, into the Earth's atmosphere uh, blocked uh, telemetry from being received here in mission control. Once again, uh, you're looking at uh, a variety of vessels and uh, aircraft uh, moving uh, towards Orion in the, the initial phase of the recovery process that will, that will result in uh, Orion uh, being uh, winched and uh, pulled into the uh, flooded well deck of the USS Anchorage uh, for its uh, trip back to the port of San Diego, Naval Base San Diego. We, uh, we now uh, received... Uh, a, uh, a report that uh, three of the five uh, crew module uprighting system airbags at the top of the uh, spacecraft did inflate fully. One uh, was partially inflated. A uh, fifth bag uh, was not uh, clearly visible uh, to the uh, initial recovery team members, uh, but uh, irrespectful of that, Orion landed in an upright position under its three main parachutes in Stable 1, as it is called. If you recall from the old Apollo days, uh, Stable 2 would have meant upside down. It landed Stable 1, it splashed down in Stable 1, and maintained uh, its upright position through the use of its uh, airbag system at the very top of the spacecraft. 